points where they were being tempted wasn't a sin. You might think if you're going through temptation, you've done failed, you've done messed up. I've done sin, I'm a terrible person. But that's not it. It's when you get into it. We're going to discuss that just for a few minutes. You see, God was seeing whether or not, whether allegiance lied with. Was it going to lie with the world or was it going to lie with him? Did they love God more than they loved the world? And at that point, it showed they loved the world more. And whenever you give into a sin, it shows you love the world more than you love God. But it's not trying to make you feel like some dirt bag. It's just the fact. It's what it is. What do we have to do when we sin? We mess up. The Bible gives specific instruction on what you do when you sin. We'll talk about that in a few minutes. Now, the evil desires within you, it says, first of all, when you are drawn away, go back to verse um, go back to verse 13. Let no one say when he is tempted of God, James chapter 1, I am I've been tempted by God, but for God cannot be tempted by evil, for he does not for, nor does he himself tempt anyone. But each one, verse 14, I'm sorry, is tempted when he is drawn away. Now, the evil desires within you, when you're going through a temptation, it draws you away. When you turn just like Eve did and saw that the tree had fruit on it and it was good, it was helpful for that knowledge and wisdom, that's what she was looking for. And she was actually in her mind already making excuses for why she was going to take that fruit. So they're drawn away. But to understand this, sin, as I said earlier, does not force itself on you. But here, it is temptation. It is chosen by you because it's attractive. Okay? You're attracted to it. What you attract to what attracts you to it? Your own evil desires. You're attracted to it. Therefore, you give into it. You're already right there, drawn away, because it's a natural attraction that you have for that sin. Now, whether you want to admit it or not, folks, we love our sin. Oh, Pastor, I just don't agree with that. I'm a sinner, I'm a saved by grace, and I'm born again, and I'm never going to sin again. Don't set yourself up with that fault. Now, the next thing it says, when you're drawn away, in verse 14, by his own desires and enticed, then in verse 15 it says, then when desire has conceived, everybody understands conception, right? Yes. When the seed is planted, and that conception takes place. Now this, you can look at the same as the path of an addict. And think of any habit that you or anyone might have an addict, once you acquire that habit, it eventually controls you. My grandma Grace always said, she never saw anything good come out of a bottle of beer. And an alcoholic is never, ever born until he takes his first drink. Using that as a celebrity thing, okay, I understand. And it's true. You can never become an addict of anything until you acquire it. And once you acquire it, and once you try it, and you continue to get into that, it will eventually control you. I always, you know, look back to my younger years. I look back to even looking at the youth today. A lot of youth want to get out for mom and dad. I want to get out where I can be free and make my own choices. But mom and dad won't let me do everything I want to do, so I want to get out and do it and be free because I want to be free to make my own choices. And you get out and you go away and you turn away from God and you get outside the will of God and you start making choices. And oh, it's great for a season. It's wonderful. Kind of like the prodigal son. He goes down and gets his father's wealth and he squanders it down over why he's squandering. He's having a great time sinning. Because sin is fun. Some of you are like, I didn't know a pastor likes sin so much. It's giving real station, it does. Sin is fun. So you take it and you just grab all of everything you've got. It's amazing how much money we spend on sin. And we spend a lot of money on sin. All of us. I'm not pointing fingers. I'm talking all of us. We spend a lot of money on sin. And he goes down and he spends all of his money on sinful things. And he comes to a point where there's a famine in the land. So he didn't prepare like his father tried to tell him. And he didn't prepare and it came a famine. 
And then there he was, stuck with nothing. And his friends are all gone. He is totally down and out. And now he's doing the most abominable thing. A little Jewish boy, a young Jewish boy, gave him and that slop the hogs. Because hogs are unclean in the Jewish faith. Under the law of Moses, hogs, swine, is unclean meats. So now he comes to his senses. And he's down there and he's broken. He doesn't even get the food the hogs are eating. And he's wondering, man, back in my father's house, it's at, least, at least I can be a servant there. And he makes his way back to the father's house. And praise God that he did. And his father said he was dead and now he's alive and all that. You see, that's what happens, you see. We get away and we make our own choices. And then our choices eventually control us. The things we go out and do, the next thing you know, I thought I had it so bad back at home. Mom and Dad wouldn't let me do this, this, and this, and this. I find out now that it was actually protecting me. But now I'm in the worst bondage than I ever thought of. And I'm not as free as I thought I was. Now I'm in bondage. And I need to be set free. And that's exactly what conceiving sin does. The tragic path of an addict. And that habit, once it's required, eventually controls you. Now, then it goes on to say, continue on in verse 15. Then when desire has conceived, it gives birth to sin, and sin, when it's full grown, brings forth death. Now, that full grown is the completion of sin in you. You're drawn away because you're attracted to it. It's conceived because you've chosen it. Now it's become full grown in your life. And it's completed. And when it reaches, when sin reaches its full maturity, it possesses every part of your character. It actually describes who you are as a person. This is you. This is the way you are. These are the choices you make. This is what you do. This is your life characterized by it. And it shows. And then, at its full maturity... When it's completed, it says it brings forth death. Do we like to think conception is something positive? You know, whenever a, a woman conceives the seed of her husband, and she is now pregnant with his seed, and she now has something growing in her, and when it becomes full grown in her womb, she gives forth life. And we celebrate life every year, don't we? What's that called? Birthdays. But here, the completion of it, the conception of it, the delivering of death, physical death. Proverbs 20, 10, 27 says this. The fear of the Lord prolongs days, but the years of the wicked will be shortened. Remember the object lesson that rangers we use with the two ropes? You got to remember that? I had two ropes here. Maybe I should have went and got some rope. I had two ropes here, and they represented your life in both of the same length. And you get one over here, this is what God has for you. You got a rope that reaches all the way to the ground. And this other rope over here, we'll start showing about our choices that we make out of God's will. And you start tying knots. So we learn how to tie knots with rangers. And every choice, bad choice you make, you tie to the knot. And next thing you know, your rope's only about this long. Our choices that we make will determine the length of our days here on this earth. Did you know that? Oh, wait a minute. God's got our... Yes, He does. When you're born, even before you're born, God has a planned set of days for you. But if you get out of God's will, if you get away from God's will, do not, you cannot hold God accountable to any choices you make out of His will. You need to understand that. Why am I here? Why, God, have you got me here? Why am I landed in jail? Or why did I get this DUI? Or why did I get this? You know, I didn't go on. And I'm just using those slurs. I'm not picking on anybody. And we get down and out and we get to wonder why our problems in our families like this. And we get to wonder why our problems in our work like this. And why can't I do this and that? It's because of choices that you make. Because you chose to sin. Now, folks, sometimes I know circumstances we can't control. And I'm not talking about that. I'm not, if you come down with a disease, it's, it's, it's different, okay? I'm talking about choices that you can control. 
that you choose to do or not to do. Remember Hamlet? To be or not to be? That's the question. That's life, is it not? Am I going to do it or am I not going to do it? There's an old saying. When in doubt, back out. Folks, that's not just for you. That's for all of us. If you're in doubt about something, get away from it and see if God is in it or not. Now, verse 17. Here is, and I know this message, for some of you, you're like, you're really discouraged. The pastor just told me I'm a good sinner. Oh, man, I'm terrible. That's not what this is all about. It's about getting our eyes on the prize. It's about focusing on what really counts. This is not, don't take away from this message and just walk away all depressed when the pastor said you're a good sinner. We're all good sinners. We've got to make our minds up not to be good sinners. Amen? Amen. We've got to make our minds up. And this is where verse 17 comes into play and how we can be encouraged. Go back to 1 John 2 and 17. It says, I've got to find it now. I'll turn it away. Okay. And the world is passing away and the lust of it. But he who does the will of God abides forever. And folks, this is awesome. Where I want to encourage you at is this. The stuff you have, the stuff you enjoy, the things your sinful pleasure likes doing is not going to be here very much longer. It's passing away. So if you got all your hopes in something in this world, change it. Change, change what your hope is in. We'll talk about that in just a couple of minutes. Do not trade the eternal things for temporal things. Remember Esau? Traded his birthright for a bowl of soup. Remember Balaam? How he wanted to curse Israel for a little bit of money from the king Balak? Do not be like them. The Bible specifically points those two fellows out. And how they traded what was eternal for things that were temporal. They didn't talk, the Bible didn't talk very well of those two guys either. The time on this earth... It's short. Dedicate yourselves to God. I'm going to look up. Let's go to 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians chapter 7. We're going to read verse 29 through 31. Some of you are going to be a little bit confused about this, but I'm going to try my best to explain it. We're going to bring us to a close. 